is always a joy to come to the ICO. <coughs> this is an evening with a difference. It's not a lecture, it's not a meeting, it's a fellowship based on the singing of those songs that General John Gowans and I wrote together. Now, I am Swedish by nationality, just to talk a bit about myself. And uh, when I was 11 years of age, my parents were appointed to Chile in South America, and then later to Argentina. So I spent all the years from 11 to 18 in South America, and Spanish is my Yes, it really is my second language, so Amen. Swedish should be the second language. <laughs> I've always loved writing, and as an active officer, I wrote and published several books. But uh, it was marvelous now when I retired. I had every day I could sit at the computer and write. My uh, first book was my autobiography, my first book in retirement, saying yes to life. A positive outlook. And then I had been intrigued all my officership about the fact that the Salvation Army removed its second general, General Bramwell Booth. How could that happen? So I decided that when I was retired I would investigate. Nobody talked about 1929. It was a state secret. I went down to the International Heritage Center and I said, do you have anything about 1929? And they said, we have a whole cupboard full, but it's under lock and key. Nobody must see what happened in 1929. But you're a retired general, you can have whatever you like. <laughs> it's boring to just write books, so after a while I thought, well, I would like to try and preserve some of the music from the musicals. I decided I would prepare some CDs, playing the piano, and like this piano also, I believe, uh, with orchestral sounds behind it, I produced four CDs like this, with two musicals on the first three, and then four musicals on the next one. The musical spirit, just like Jesus spoke before, had no Salvation Army content, and it could be done by churches as well. And spirit particularly, because it came at the time of the charismatic revival, the Holy Spirit revival. Many churches picked up uh, the musical spirit to perform, to be like Jesus. So here we go. Begin. It began in 1967 when the youth secretary of this territory decided that the army could do with a musical for youth year, 1968. There was a Captain Gowans. Now, I didn't know really John Gowans. He was the corps officer of Kingston, just down the road there. And I was the corps officer of Hillingdon, just up the road the other way. And uh, Brigadier Dennis Hunter said he would like a musical that the young people could perform in youth here. And uh, somehow it must have been that John Gowans and I did a lot of talking that evening because at the end of the evening, Brigadier Hunter pointed to John Gowans and said, you, and then he pointed to me, and you, get together and write a musical. And that's how it happened. Now, we literally had to learn to write together. And people sometimes ask, what comes first, the words or the music? Well, 90% of the songs, John Gowns wrote the words first, and I set them to music. But sometimes we used another system. We would just take a phrase. And if you turn to song number 10, which also is from Take Over Bid, I'll be able to illustrate that. Someone cares. 
Now, we literally took that phrase, and that was it, someone cares. <clears throat> and I went home, and I thought, someone cares. Now, what should we do with that? What about someone cares? Someone cares. Yeah, it's possible. What about a minor key? Someone cares. Someone cares. Yeah, I was toying around trying to find ideas. And then I thought, well, what about instead of going down, let's go up? Someone cares. Yeah, that's not possibility. Let's do it again. Someone cares. Yeah, let's do it again. La, 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 la. John Gans and I have written more than 200 songs together, but this remains our favourite. Now, we gathered a cast. It was here in West London, and uh, we built the ship as we sailed in it. There's, we used to write two or three songs and then meet together on a Friday, and they would learn the songs in just seemingly a few minutes, and we had to write script. And we said, by the next week, we need more songs. And gradually, we <coughs> built the musical as we went along. Now, we had no idea how officers or salvationists would react to a musical. But I'm pleased to tell you, and it was a great congregation, there were 1,600 field officers gathered. And we presented the musical. And when it ended, this applause was so spontaneous and so warm that we knew that the musical was home and dry. What we didn't know in that moment was that the era of the musicals had been born. Our second musical was a musical called Hosea. And the prophet Hosea used his own matrimonial story as an illustration. And here you have it in these words, beautiful words, by John Gowans. the National Youth Secretary for the British Territory, as it then was. And uh, one day, uh, a gentleman, an officer, walked into my office. And he said, you won't know me, but I am Captain Graham Hislop, and I come from the Eastern Territory in Australia. And I want to tell you, I'm here because of one song that you and John Gowans wrote. He said it was like an electric bolt went right through me. I suddenly felt the presence of God as I've never felt in my life. I didn't quite understand what had happened to me. And it wasn't long before Graham Hisler was converted, became a soldier, and then offered for officership. And after being commissioned, his influence was so great that he became the Assistant Territorial Candidate Secretary on commissioning. 
And it all came from this song. So let's sing it together. We thank God, John and I thank God, for the influence we have been able to be through our songs. We wrote a musical called Man Mark II. This was about Man Mark II, the second model of man, when you've been converted. And there's a song there that has become, very, excuse me, very meaningful. frequently asked to do a musical. Uh, for some reason or other, we were very rarely appointed close to each other. If one was appointed this way, the other one was pointed the opposite direction. But we did most of our writing by telephone. We didn't have email in those days. And just the occasional meeting together. But we always had an understanding. Uh, we could work separately. The other, we knew what the other one was thinking. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of meeting together in this way. And I just now pray your blessing on each member of the International College for Officers. Amen. Bless them, bless their loved ones. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all your blessings. Amen. 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 And that, friends, brings our evening to a close. Thank you.